Hey everybody, Al Puglisi. This video is on my fictional city, Pugsburg. I was inspired to build this city uh, quite a long time ago when I was a teenager. I first started seeing uh, George Selios' Franklin and South Manchester layout. He had built a gigantic city, and I vowed I had to have a city. As a matter of fact, at one point, I didn't want to even have any mountains or any type of wooded scenes of any nature. I was so inspired by uh, George Selios and the Franklin to South Manchester Railroad that I debated about just having a city and not having anything else. But I set aside quite a bit of room and decided to build a city, uh, again, that was inspired by George. Now, please keep in mind, this is a work in progress. It is far from being finished. I'm just going to go over some of my plans and what I'm doing, and I'll show you some of the structures and give you a detailed overview of, of the city and its progress. All right, folks, let's start with a pan of downtown Pugsburg, just a quick sweep over of the city, and then I'll start explaining some of the projects and what I'm doing. Let me try my best to get some pan shots here. Again, it's a work in progress. There's quite a few skyscrapers. I've got the old Bremiseltzer Tower. We're pan back to that scene. I just want to sweep across some of the structures or talk about them in greater detail. Now here's the American Brewery. This is an iconic Baltimore structure that was from CMR, Custom Model Railroads. Very hard to get. I have not done the streets yet. What I'm in the process of doing is I'm laying down sidewalks. I will position all of the buildings exactly where I want the buildings to go. Let me give you an aerial view. I'll do my street spacing. Some are one way, some are two way. I'll lay everything out the way I want the buildings to be and the way I want them to sit. And then what I decided to do was I decided to start cutting out the sidewalk strips and glue, gluing them down using a ruler in a straight line and then getting up on a ladder and making sure everything is straight. The sidewalks on both sides are going to lock in the buildings. So when I go to make the roads, I can remove the buildings if necessary and go in and make my roads. So again, none of the roads have been started yet. I'm just laying everything out to get an idea of where I want things. Sidewalks are real simple to do as far as making them. You can use cardstock and scribe them. These are old sidewalks that I saved from a lot of the Bachman Spectrum skyscraper kits. I cut them up. I score them. I put cracks in them. I paint them, I stain them with alcohol ink to make sidewalks. Some of these are plaster sidewalks. Some of them are cardstock sidewalks. Some of them are the sidewalks I just showed you. You can see the bare wood. The streets have not been done yet. Now, there's a million different ways to do streets. I can remove all the buildings, leaving the sidewalks. And I can pour a Woodland Scenics paving material down and do the streets that way. Uh, the streets can be actually painted on the wood. Or I can make the streets out of cardstock. Um, there's just a million different methods to make streets. I highly recommend that you look at my playlist videos. Doug Foscali uh, has a section on how to do streets. And George Selios also describes in his Alan Keller, Great Model Railroad videos, how he makes streets. So just at this point, laying everything out, getting ready to actually make the streets. A lot of these buildings in Pugsburg, folks, are from Custom Model Railroads. The pink building you see in the corner there is the Belvedere Hotel. I actually took four of the Belvedere kits and kit bash them to make a larger structure. Next to it 
the tall white skyscraper is another custom model railroads kit. The skyscraper that is tannish in color is a Bachman Spectrum skyscraper. And you might be asking yourself, gee, what is this cardboard mock-up in the middle of the city? Let me show you. The station that's going to go here is going to be a rendition of the Baltimore, Ohio station in Chicago. This is actually a full-size cardboard mock-up of the station. It has enough room to swallow up about nine passenger cars, and it will be the main station in the city of Pugsburg. So this is just a mock-up for the size of the station in the future. Now the three skyscrapers you see here, uh, actually there's quite more than three. The white one on the end is a custom model railroads kit. The one uh, that's tannish next to the second of the left is a Bachman Spectrum. The red one is a Bach Bachman Spectrum. The middle one is a Bachman Spectrum. And this one is a custom model railroads kit of the railroad headquarters, the B&O headquarters. It's now a luxury apartment complex, I believe, in Baltimore. This big building here, I kit bashed out of a Milwaukee station from Walther's. It's my rendition of my hospital. I wanted to make something look like John Hopkins, kind of John Hopkins looking castle-like structure. So I took a Milwaukee station and kit bashed it. And this is my actual hospital complex. This is the Severn. The Severn is a luxury uh, apartment condo complex in Baltimore. It's a historic structure. Custom Model Railroads makes this. This is actually three Severn kits put together. It's much larger than the kit that Custom Model Railroads makes. Uh, simply put, I had the room to make the full-size structure, so Jeff at Custom Model Railroads was kind enough to make me the extra walls so that I could make the structure full-size. Next to it is an enormous kit-bashed chlorine plant. It's a very whimsical structure. Kind of uh, got the inspiration of this from some of the whimsical structures on George Selios's layout. This was kit-bashed using a number of different Walther's kits. I happen to like European-type buildings. And in a lot of cities, there are many European looking buildings. Some of these are Kibri, some of these are Vollmer, some of these are Faller. Um, I enjoy them, I like them, and uh, it's my city, so I have free reign as far as what goes there. Some of these smaller skyscrapers are Lundy and City Classic buildings. And again, here's some more Vollmer, um, Faller, Kibri, German-like structures. In the back, I've got Krabby Jacks, named after my son Jack. It's the all-you-can-eat crab house in the city. Now, there's two power plants in the city. This power plant, way in the corner is actually the old power plant and that's being converted into a condominium complex because this power plant is the new power plant that's going to be taking over to power the city. It is a much more modern version. So this will be the new power plant and that is the old power plant way in the corner. Again, that's being con converted into condominiums. This power plant here is a custom model railroads structure. Next to it is a Walther's Brewery and some kit bash structures. And I have some larger structures in the back that I'll talk about shortly. 
the old power plant there with the tall gray smokestacks is a kit bashed kit. I got inspired from this from a kit George Celios had, uh, but it's a kit bash from a number of different Kibri and Walther's brewery kits that uh, I put together in order to make that older power plant. A friend of mine, Harry Heike, at one time was selling these big flat buildings, rooms by the hour, the Notel Hotel. It's an enormous apartment complex, and it's a flat structure. It is no longer available, sadly, uh, but I was able to obtain a few of these from Harry Heike, and I was able to build them as flats to put up against the wall to further populate the city with various buildings. Just a really, really neat complex. This front row of skyscrapers are custom model railroads kits. The first one on the far left with the aqua roof is the Park Hotel. It is a huge skyscraper and it is built with no additions. That's the actual size the kit comes in. Next to it is the Merc Mercantile Bank kit from Custom Model Railroads. The tall tower is Majestic Towers. The triangle building you see here is the gas and electric building with one additional floor added to it. This beautiful white building is the Fife building from Custom Model Railroads. And this purplish gray building on the left is kind of a free artistic expression. This is the St. Paul building. Obviously, the St. Paul building in Baltimore is like a darker brown. I took artistic license and used a purplish gray on this particular structure. There's our buddy, the Bremiseltzer Tower. And below it, I have not come to a conclusion as to how I'm going to do this. I'm going to light that up and probably make a waterfront scene out of this and put some waterfront front structures underneath there to fill up the area. Um, but that's a work in progress. One of the main streets of the city, I'm going to have a circus coming to town. And again, this is a work in progress, but I'm going to pan across this. I have not put the figures in yet. Again, this is a work in progress. I'm kind of lining up a circus parade here. Going straight down the street, it's going to be a rather long circus parade. It's going to go all the way down the street. And I am going to set up grandstands along the circus route. And I will probably get a couple hundred figures populating hundreds of people here watching the circus as it goes by. Again, this is a work in progress. Circus continues underneath. Again, a work in progress. Now, if you notice along the walls, there's some flats that I used as background buildings. Some of these are actual flats that I am going to be selling soon. I call them Baltimore flats. These are actually pictures of some Baltimore structures that I took that can be used as background flats. Now, these buildings back there, those tower buildings, are actually Kibri kits that I had some spare walls to, and I actually used the wall sections as flats. That tan and brown flat in the back is from Angie's Trackside Flats. You can go to Angie's Trackside Flats.com. She has a number of background flats that work very well in the city. Now, between buildings, I'll also use spare walls of skyscrapers. I told you that a number of these skyscrapers are Walther's. Actually, they're not Walther's. They are Bachman Spectrum skyscrapers. And these are that green flat in the back there is an old skyscraper wall. And this is an example of one of the flats that I will be selling shortly. That is the 
a flat of the Cathedral Mary Our Queen Church in Baltimore, and that flat is tucked in there. Looks very natural. So there's a number of flats that have been tucked in. Here's a City Classics green flat in the back, again touched in, kind of add depth to what's going on. If you look between the skyscrapers here, you can see some photographic building pictures that I will be selling shortly that you can use as backgrounds and backdrops in cities. Um, the church tower there between these two structures there is the AME Church in Baltimore. And the structure you see between these two skyscrapers is another structure in Baltimore. Again, I have a lot of these that I'll be selling soon on the web. And uh, I will do a feature uh, video on these as the line grows. Here's a scene coming out of Pugsburg. I'll sweep around here. There's the big chlorine plant, the Severn. You can see how you swing out of the city and as you're coming out of the city. These are some more of the background flats I'm talking about. Let me show you what they look like. And there's a Bremiseltzer background flat that I'll be selling as well. Again, all of these are from Baltimore City. These were photographs that I took and made flats out of. Let me pan out and let's go look at them. Folks, this is just a example of a flat I just propped up. This is a large flat that I sell for $20. I don't have stock right now. This is the AME Cathedral in Baltimore. I make the towers as separate flats, and I also make the entire cathedral as a large HO or O scale flat for back, background, backdrop purposes. I just propped it up here to give you an idea of what it would look like. Um, let, me, let, let me show you some others. That white hotel in the back background is a historic hotel in Baltimore. It's one of my flats. It's called the Congress Hotel. Just wanted to give you an idea of what that looks like tucked in the back. Give you an idea of some perspective. Just give you a quick overview of some of these backdrop flats. This is the American Brewery. And these are some other flats that I'll be selling. They're mounted on hard cardstock backings and you simply put them in and they can fill in empty spaces in your city. I'm going to have a very large selection. These are actual structures that I photographed in downtown Baltimore. Some are small, some are large. They work very well in the background to backdrop when you're making a city. We'll talk about these in a future video, but a lot of these are tucked in the background in Pugsburg. Here is another background building that Harry Heike did of resin. It's the Nightingale Brewing Complex. It's a huge complex. It's about an inch and a half thick. And again, it can be used as a background structure against the wall. He really does a nice job to complete the scene. Here's a shot of some ambient lighting being installed. Again, this is a work in progress, folks. Eventually, when the cities are finished, or when the streets are finished, hundreds of cars need to be added, parked, and moving on the streets. Hundreds of figures need to be added, Trash, mailboxes, newspapers, countless details need to be added. So this is definitely a work in progress, but I wanted to go ahead and pan away from it. 
Thanks for watching.